Hello, this is Father Randy Sly with another installment of Day by Day, where each day we take a look at a reading from Holy Scripture found in the Daily Mass. And today is Friday of the third week of Easter, a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Saul, still breathing murderous threats against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues in Damascus that if he should find any men or women who belonged to the way, he might bring them back to Jerusalem in chains. On his journey as he was nearing Damascus, a light from the sky suddenly flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? He said, Who are you, sir? The reply came, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. Now get up and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. The men who were traveling with him stood speechless, for they heard the voice but could see no one. Saul got up from the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand and brought him to Damascus. For three days he was unable to see and he neither ate nor drank. There was a disciple in Damascus named Ananias. And the Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias, he answered, Here am I, Lord. The Lord said to him, Get up and go to the street called Straight, and ask at the house of Judas for a man from Tarsus named Paul, named Saul. He is there praying. And in a vision, he has seen a man named Ananias come in and lay his hands on him, that he might regain, or that he may regain his sight. But Ananias replied, Lord, I have heard from many sources about this man, what evil things he has done to your holy ones in Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priests to imprison all who call upon your name. But the Lord said to him, Go, for this man is a chosen instrument of mine to carry my name before Gentiles, kings, and Israelites, and I will show him what he will have to suffer for my name. So Ananias went and entered the house. Laying his hands on him, he said, Saul, my brother, the Lord Jesus has sent me. Jesus, who appeared to you on the way by which you came, that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately things like scales fell from his eyes, and he regained his sight. He got up and was baptized. And when he had eaten, he, had reco- or he recovered his strength. He stayed some days with the disciples in Damascus, and he began at once to proclaim Jesus in the synagogues that he is the Son of God. The, God, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today's reading from the Acts of the Apostles is one of the most inspiring and exciting uh, places in the book of Acts. Here we have the conversion of Saul, who became Paul. And Saul, as you know from uh, earlier readings from the book of Acts, was a great enemy of the church. He was a Pharisee. He was trained by one of the greatest Pharisees by the name of Gamaliel or Gamaliel. And as one who was so finely trained, he was uh, really uh, fixed on making sure that the Jewish faith is not tampered with in any way, shape, or form. So when he hears about the, the works and the words of Jesus, his resurrection, and all of those things, he became a part of that uh, opposition group that wanted to destroy the works of Jesus. He wanted to make sure that this uh, whole uh, aspect of a, quote, new faith, unquote, would be killed off and quickly quenched. And so he was there at the stoning of Stephen. He condoned that stoning. In fact, he was there to support what was going on. And out of that, he continued to persecute, as we, as you may remember from uh, the earlier reading from Acts chapter 8, it said Saul was consenting to his execution, 
and that um, there was a severe persecution in the church, and that while devout men uh, buried Stephen and made a loud lament about him, Saul was trying to destroy the church, entering house after house and dragging out men and women. He handed them over for imprisonment. I mean, he was ruthless. I don't know if we could even begin to fathom how evil and how scary it would have been uh, for Christians to experience the persecution that was levied by this one individual who seemed to have made it his own life work at this point to kill off the church, to destroy it. And so he decided not only did he want to do this in uh, Jerusalem, but he knew that the Christians were fleeing the city and going north, and they were going up into Syria. And so he wanted to chase them down. He wanted to go where they were going and bring them back so that they might be imprisoned. And again, not tried necessarily, but imprisoned. And uh, we don't know if there would ever be a trial or if he was looking for their final execution. We really don't know all that was in his mind and his heart. But he made his way up to Damascus. And he had letters of authorization uh, from the chief priests that he could go to the synagogues in these dispersed places. And there he had authority to capture those within the synagogue who belonged to what was called in the book of Acts at this point, the way. Which is interesting, isn't it? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And they were calling this group the way. So Saul, in uh, traveling from Jerusalem, he was getting near Damascus in Syria. That's a, quite a long journey. And so you can imagine the, the motivation, the mission, the passion that this individual had. And just as he got to his destination, just before he arrived, there on the Damascus Road, he has a divine encounter with the living God, with Jesus himself. A light from the sky flashed around him. He fell to the ground. He uh, heard Jesus speaking to him. And it's interesting, uh, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And he said, who are you, sir? And actually, the word there could be more easily translated, Lord. So there was that sense already that in this encounter, he knew that who he was uh, facing was not just a mere person that was either of the same level or of a lower level than he was, but he sensed that this was someone of high authority, high power, somebody that was majestic. And so he said, who are you, Lord? And the reply said, I am Jesus who are you, whom you are persecuting. And I think that is interesting, again, recognizing that Jesus identifies with his church, that as the church was being uh, uh, persecuted, that Jesus himself was being persecuted, that he and the church are basically one. He is the head of the church of whom the church is his body. And so here is Saul being uh, uh, encountered by the Lord. And uh, the men that were with him uh, stood speechless. They heard the voice, but they could see no one. So they were experiencing vicariously from being with Saul the encounter that he was having. And when he was down on the ground in this uh, time of interaction with the Lord, uh, obviously, with that bl bright flash of light, his eyes were closed. But when he opened them, he couldn't see. And so at that point, he was blind. And the people that were with him had to take him by the hand and bring him into the city of uh, Damascus. And there he was uh, staying in the house of Judas. And um, Judas, I don't know if he was... Uh, the rabbi for the synagogue, but he was definitely a leader in the synagogue, and uh, he was hosting Saul at this point. And while Saul was there, Ananias was called upon by the Lord to go and minister healing to him. And that was not an easy 
uh, calling. If you can imagine again, Jesus calling upon an individual to go and to minister to the person who was greatly feared by the Christians for his uh, really torturous and evil position that he had no mercy nothing but enmity and, and, and hatred in his eyes for Christians. But the Lord really pushed him to do it, and he did. He went. And again, Jesus told Ananias that there's something different that has happened to Saul. He is going to be an instrument of mine, Jesus says. And so you're to go and to minister to him. And so that's what Ananias did. And he said, the Lord sent me uh, to you uh, that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. So it wasn't just to send him as a healer, but as a minister of ordination, that he would be ordained to a ministry, a missionary ministry. And uh, at that point, uh, his eyes uh, were opened, the scales, whatever had been formed over his eyes, dropped off. He regained his sight. Now, the interesting thing, later on in life, we hear about the fact that Saul, or now Paul, in his letters, talks about the fact that his eyesight isn't that good. In fact, at one point in one letter, he, he wrote in his own hand uh, at the end of the letter, see what large letters I am writing. So, uh, I'm wondering if, if that wasn't a result of the encounter that he had with the Lord. He wasn't blind, but as he regained his sight, there was something different about him. He was limited. That may be, in fact, the thorn in the flesh that he'd been given. But anyway, whatever it was, as he regained his sight, uh, he was then baptized and uh, then began to again eat and gain his strength. One of the things that's really amazing is that immediately he began to, began to proclaim Jesus as the Son of God. There was this immediate transformation of heart and mind that the one who was breathing threats and hatred for Christians was now going to the synagogues and saying the same thing that the ones he hated were saying before. What a great, great story. And so today we have this encounter with Saul, who will become Paul and go on to be the greatest missionary in the life of the church, an apostle uh, of Jesus, and one who formed the, the majority of our New Testament writings other than the gospel. So what a great day for us to celebrate this uh, transformation of life. And if Jesus can do it to Saul, he can do it to so many others. So may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts together be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, as you can tell, this was a, a, an exciting scripture to camp out on today. And uh, tomorrow we will be together, the Lord willing, for another edition of Day by Day. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.